is usually about ordering some goods, receiving the goods, but having someone else pay for it. Hi, Gregor. What do you think about ordering some pizza today? Sure, but uh, will you pay for it? I think neither of us need to pay for it. Didn't you read about it in the newspaper how you do nowadays? Oh, you mean that uh, you order the pizza but you send the invoice to someone else? Yeah. Is this a good example of fail fast? I think this is a good example of how e-commerce fraud is usually about ordering some goods, receiving the goods, but having someone else pay for it. Either a, a the merchant or a third party. So is this something you should have thought of when you're designing this service? Because ordering pizza online, that, that I think is a good way to have some quick meal. I think there is a balance between, as an orderer, to only pay if you receive the goods, and as a supplier, to only supply if you get paid. And uh, uh, that balance uh, is what you need to find. But when it comes to pizza, it's a fast transaction. You don't expect to wait more than 20, 30 minutes for your pizza. And it's not a huge amount either. It's less, it's less than 100 euro usually for an order. So this uh, fraud, it was about you could order a pizza using someone else's postal address that is easy to look up. And there, there were no checks if uh, the person that received the pizza was the same that was uh, on that apartment. Yeah, it's very interesting, um, Casimir, because uh, who would check the ID card when you deliver something like pizza? Uh, so, uh, what we need to do is we need to create a, a closed loop between who is paying and who is receiving, who is ordering and who is receiving. It should usually, unless it's a gift, it should be the same person paying, ordering and receiving. And uh, I think if you pay by credit card online, then a simple check would be for having the same credit card present when you deliver the pizza. Yeah. And when I uh, order from Amazon, they will deliver to my home, but they can also deliver to the hotel where I'm staying. So there, there is not a closed loop there. No, you're right. And, uh, but they do require prepayment by credit card. Yes. So I think the difference here was that uh, you could pay later by invoice, so, so the loop was quite open. Mm -hmm. So it's a payment solution that has a huge impact. It is the, the where, where is the loop open? So in, in the pizza case, uh, because it's a little transaction, the delivery guy will not check your ID. But if they had checked the ID, then probably the, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So, uh, do you mean that we have to pay our own pizzas now? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, let's go and have a lunch then. Okay, let's go. Yeah. And see you next week on Architecture Corner. Hopefully you get some food. Yeah, let's not start to death. Yeah. And if you like this episode, there are plenty more on Architecture Corner on YouTube. So, please go there and subscribe.